welcome to HMAS Onslow, an Oberon class submarine moored here at the Australian National Maritime Museum, which we're bringing to life as part of our new exciting action stations program. Oberon class submarines served with the Australian Navy for about 30 years and at the time were regarded to be amongst the finest conventional submarines in the world. The space you're currently in is the weapon space, which is where the torpedoes and missiles of the submarine were stowed. And you can look around the compartment, you can look left, you can look right, you can look up, you can look down. On your left, you'll see we've got Mark 8 torpedo and the Mark 23 torpedo. Now, those torpedoes were part of the submarine when they were first commissioned and were replaced in the 1980s by the UGM-84 Harpoon missile and the Mark 48 anti-submarine and anti-ship uh, torpedo. If you look at the screen here on your right, you'll see the result of a Mark 48 attack on the destroyer escort HMAS Torrens. And I'm sure you'd agree the damage is pretty monumental. This space was used for a whole variety of reasons, well beyond just being a weapon space. For instance, when the submarines were first commissioned, they had a crew of 63, and at the end of their commission, they had a crew of about 83. The extra 20 personnel were all accommodated up here in the weapon space, bunks arranged along the weapon racks. Let's rise, submarine section. Another important use for this space is as an escape compartment. And I've asked Amy this morning to dress up in the escape suit. Essentially, the escape suit is very much like a immersion suit that you find on a normal ship. It's self-contained. Basically, there's a hood here that we would uh, zip up. Air escapes into the hood itself, and Amy will be able to breathe on her way up to the surface. An important component of the escape is the escape tower, and if you look up now, you'll see the inside of the tower. Essentially, Amy would climb a ladder, go into the tower, we would shut the hatch at the bottom, open the hatch at the top, and that will allow Amy to make her way to the surface. Here we are in the control room of HMAS Onslow, and as a commanding officer of two of these submarines, this is where I spent most of my life. It's called the control room for a very good reason, because this is where the submarine is controlled in almost all its functions. So whether it's on the surface, whether it's dived, whether we're conducting an attack, or whether we're trying to deal with an evolution or a, a problem, we try and control it all from here. Now, there's some very prominent features in this particular space. So we have forward of the camera, or where you are now, we have the attack periscope. And that periscope, as the name implies, is used during the final stages of an attack. It's monocular, very hard to see from a surface ship, and ideal for that close-in engagement when you do do a visual attack. This other periscope is called the search periscope, and as its name implies, it is used during the search function of an attack. It's binocular, better field of view, better resolution, but much easier to see from a surface ship. Over here on the port side, your right-hand side, you can see the one-man control. Now, that wheel is very similar to the yoke that you see on older aircraft. And exactly the same as an aircraft, you turn it left or right, submarine moves left or right. You push it forwards, submarine dives. You pull it back, the submarine starts to rise. We have here the trim seat. Now, the submarine has to be neutrally buoyant to stay dive. We don't want it to be heavy. We don't want it to be light. It's neutrally buoyant. And all that is done uh, from that seat. This panel here is the panel that we use to actually make the submarine dive. So, to make it dive, we open the main vents in the tops of the ballast tanks, air rushes out, water rushes at the bottom, and the submarine goes down. To make the submarine surface, we shut those main vents, and then we use uh, these particular blowing panels here, where, which, are control, which control the air to each ballast tank, and we can blow the water out of the ballast tanks and make the submarine rise to the surface. Just after that, we've got the controls for the various masts, of which the periscopes are two. And right after here, we have the engine room. Now, while I was at sea as the captain, my domain was very much the control room, but this was the domain of the engineers. And at any stage, when we were operating engines, we'd have four or five sailors working in this compartment. It was incredibly noisy, and perhaps this can give you an example of what it was like. Now, Oberon's were diesel electric, and that meant that the main engines were never connected to the propellers themselves. The engines were connected to a generator, it provided power, charged the batteries, the batteries would provide the power to the main motors, and the main motors would turn the propellers. So, a very effective way of propelling the submarine. On the surface, on the engines, we would run at about 12 knots, dived on electric power, we could go up to about 20 knots, and that was about 36 kilometres per hour. Now, it is a very interesting space, and if you have a look around, the most obvious feature are the two diesel engines. They're both 16 cylinders, 
And incidentally, these engines are actually designed for diesel electric trains and modified in order to operate in a submarine. As well as that, if you look around, you'll see a whole variety of pipework and a mass of valves. You'll also notice that many of those valves are blue, green, yellow, grey, black. Some are hexagonal, some are circular, some have knurls. And the reason for that is so that we can actually tell at any stage what sort of system we're working with. And this is particularly important if it was dark for, because of an electrical failure or the compartment was filled with smoke. So we always understood the system we were working on. Well, look, I hope you've had a great opportunity to see something of an Oberon and what life in one of these boats was really like. I'd hope now that you will come down and see Onslow here at the Maritime Museum. I also hope you'll come and see the Dairy Class Destroyer Vampire and the Attack Class Patrol Boat Advance and come and join us for Action Stations.